Hey everybody, it's Necap here, and in this video, I have my latest update from my Rep Paladin testing on the beta. Uh, so if you've been keeping track, I'm, I'm just kind of going along, showing you my process, going through testing different talents, different variations of talents, trying to change only a couple things at a time because obviously there's so many different things you can change. Uh, you won't don't want to have too many variables shifting, although we can look at the details and see exactly what each thing is doing, but there's different interactions and whatnot. So it basically has been resulting in me running the same dungeon, um, basically for this entire level. I'm almost to the next level, so I'm only gonna have a, a one or two more probably <laughs> of these dungeons at this level, but I think I've kind of got, at least for leveling dungeons, uh, a good idea of how the spec is working for dungeon gameplay. So my latest attempt had my highest DPS by quite a large margin uh, for overall. Uh, it was at 27K, uh, and before that, my highest was at 22K um, DPS for overall. And so that, that's obviously quite a large margin. Uh, my lowest was like 20K with a talent build that focused on the judgment damage, which, which was not the way to go, it turns out. Um, and yeah, so this was by far my best. And I'll, I'll kind of talk about the findings that I had from that. So let's go ahead and check, take a look at the build that I ran for this. So over on the Paladin tree, uh, you can't see anything where my camera's at, but there shouldn't be really anything. You can see that a little bit, you can see down there. So I do not have Dusk of Dawn or Seal of Order yet. That'll be where my next two talents go over on the Paladin side. Other than that, it's the kind of stuff you would suspect. I don't have, um, you know, I might normally take sacrifice in a normal situation. I don't have that, but that's okay. Um, doesn't really matter for leveling dungeons. And then, especially when I'm just testing damage. Uh, and then over here, I did have um, Touch of Light running on my highest DPS one, but I'm going to talk, might as well just talk about it now. Um, so Incandescence and Touch of Light, this node in general is severely undertuned. I've, you know, submitted a report about that. It, it is very, very undertuned, but Touch of Light in particular um, I might as well have not even had it on. It pretty much did nothing. I still did my highest damage. Every other dungeon I had run incandescence. Now that doesn't do a ton of damage either by any means, but this node is almost worthless. Um, honestly, like it might be better to put <laughs> uh, something into 2% haste or something. Uh, it might be worth trying because it is so bad. This node, if you're gonna have a talent that does damage, I think it has to do at least some amount of damage. Uh, it, it, it's pretty bad. It's it's just as bad or worse than exorcism as, it, as far as tuning goes. So this node in general is bad. That's something that we should talk about that we should make sure we point out. Um, obviously, I think a lot of us are fine just skipping it if it's bad, but if they're gonna play into the consecration thing, I think in particular the incandescence, you know, there should be a consecration build and then incandescence becomes really good in that build, you would think, right? So um, if they're gonna push the consecration, then they need to make the abilities like exorcism and incandescence do good amount of damage to kind of push this consecration build. Uh, so that that's kind of like my only takeaway on the paladin side, everything else is pretty much just the stuff you have to put it in. Um, that makes sense, right? All the damage abilities and stuff like that. So over on the Rep Paladin side, from the last video, um, I, I switched a, a few things up there. Um, I did not take Path of Ruin for this dungeon that did my best. I did Ashes to Dust. Now in previous dungeons, when I did Ashes to Dust, since there's a 35% chance to not get a Blade of Justice, I actually did not pair that up with Consecrated Blade. But for this, I did pair it up with Consecrated Blade. And I found the results to be pretty good. So even though not every single one of my Art of Wars was giving me a Consecration, essentially, um, it was still doing it enough that my Consecration damage remained pretty steady. Um, as if, it, you know, to when I, you know, had Path of Ruin or if you had no talent point here, uh, it was actually pretty steady as far as damage goes. Like, within, like, within 10% of, of the Consecration damage that I would do otherwise. This dungeon that I did the highest DPS on, it was also pulled very aggressively, so you would expect it to be a higher damage dungeon, but I would say it was pulled very similar to the first dungeon run that I did. Um, very, very similar to that, to where it was like 8 to 10 on a lot of pulls, and for that one I had Path of Ruin, which is a big difference there. Uh, I didn't have some other things. I had some things in Relentless Inquisitor on that run as well. I had the Truce Wake 
as well in that first run. And I think some of those talent points were just kind of wasted. And what we need to be doing is putting talent points in stuff that actually does something because there's so many at currently undertuned abilities. So let's talk about the two of them that are just very, very undertuned and pretty much not worth taking right now, which is a shame. Um, honestly, exorcism, a lot of people liked exorcism. So I, I really derided exorcism. It's not because I don't like the talent guys. I like the idea of it. I actually like the idea of having a consecration build. I'm, I'm not, you know, that's not a popular take among high end <laughs> rep players, but I actually like the idea of having a consecration build. And, you know, I think that, uh, the exorcism then needs to do more damage, right? It's right now it's hilariously undertuned. It's pretty much not worth taking. You know, I did way more damage without it than I did with it. And uh, obviously it needs to be tuned better. I, I, I already spoke on it. I like it too. I like the idea of it. I like all the numbers. I like the, the consecration numbers, the exorcism numbers. I like all the numbers too, man. I, I love that stuff too. On live, I play with the classic numbers because it looks cooler. Like I, I get it. I, I like it too, but it needs to actually do damage. The numbers can't be so low. <laughs> they need to be bigger numbers. Uh, and then the other one that's hilariously undertuned is actually Truce Wake. Now, we kind of already knew this because it's not like the upgraded conduit version. But this, you, you will not even notice whether you have it on or not. Uh, at least, again, in these leveling dungeons, this is, I have to do the caveat because I'm not doing Mythic Plus. Those are not even available to test anyways, even if I was max level. Truce Wake damage is completely negligible. Uh, so these two talents, pretty much putting them into anything else is going to increase your damage. Uh, by some amount. So the differences are, uh, you know, instead of having like Relentless Quizzer, instead of having Exorcism, instead of having Truce Wake, uh, I have Seal of Wrath, which is Judgment has a chance to uh, cast again and deal uh, extra holy damage. And then I have two points into High Lord's Judgment. This did not have a huge effect by any means. Uh, these two talents that both affect Judgment. Hold on, there's like a bunch of fighting going on here. It's a bit annoying. Um, go in this other room or something. Uh, but the, uh, the, um, the, these judgment talents did not affect judgment that much. Now I've, I've run these on a few dungeons. Now I even did a full judgment build and it only really varies by like 20% or so by having all the judgment damage. Your judgment damage is not going to be super high, obviously, at, when you're doing a lot of AoE, right? Your Divine Storm is going to be number one. Your Wake of Ashes or Path of Ruin is going to be really high. Um, and then you're going to have other things in there. And then Judgment's going to be, you know, in that next tier or whatever. So uh, it did it did increase by 20%, which is a, a good amount uh, by having that um, these extra judgment talents, but th like the boundless judgment that didn't really do anything extra when I did it. It must not happen enough essentially. Um, so it maybe needs to be a 50% chance or whatever to make that talent a little bit better. But yeah, it, it did increase my damage. And it, the, the main point is though, that these judgment abilities did more than like the exorcism and the truce wake. Right? So overall they were better. Uh, which is not what we want to see, right? When we talk about tuning for exorcism, uh, what I would say is, and true swake is, they're AoE abilities, so they need to do more damage than their single target ability counterparts, especially ones that are in the same area. So uh, I think that's a, I think that's a big deal there. Obviously, exorcism needs tune, true swake needs tune. Uh, I could you know go on to that forever, I suppose. I am playing with might over crusade. Crusade just doesn't feel good in leveling dungeons. It's too fast. Mythic Plus, it'll probably feel a lot better than um, in like a leveling dungeon. But again, I can't test that yet. So there's no point of really worrying about it. Uh, I did play a Sealed Verdict and Expurgation build as well. Um, I think it went fine, but it, was, it wasn't it was anything special, I suppose. I, I think, honestly, if the dungeon was pulled similar, it would probably do the similar to this, uh, to this like judgment build. So like you could move points over here from somewhere. Um, like maybe you could move over these two from High Lord's Judgment and put them over there, and then you'd need another point if you wanted to get a full sealed verdict. Uh, so maybe that maybe that's why it doesn't quite work out exactly. But because uh, uh, you know Seal of Wrath is actually a pretty good spell overall. So but but maybe you take out Seal of Wrath too. I don't know, uh, and you go to more to a, a blade build. But again, that's also with this uh, Ashes to Dust, uh, which I am going to recommend to take. You know, you're getting less Blades of Wrath, so it really diminishes the value there. Um, and so, yeah, 
that that that's that's kind of where we are you have a judgment build you have a blade build and then you have like a i'm gonna try to take the exorcism and the truce wake aoe build but they're not tuned well enough to actually take so like you have the aoe stuff in the middle and you have two different types of single target on the outsides and the aoe build unfortunately just kind of stinks and you do more damage even in aoe situations without taking the aoe build which just cannot be the case obviously so let's talk about the biggest difference right so we talked at the very beginning of the video uh 27k versus 22k that's that's a pretty big difference right in the same dungeon same gear same level uh pulled very similar obviously i can't say they're pulled exactly the same but pulled very similar uh to each other now the biggest difference is uh that i did ashes to dust instead of path of ruin and then i took consecrated blade despite taking ashes to dust oh reconnect all right so th that would be the biggest difference is that i did that so what what's happening there so what's causing that to happen because path of ruin is a very strong ability um so this dungeon i did mention was pulled very aggressively so what happens there is path of ruin beyond five targets does less damage so uh so path of ruin you know does the less damage beyond five targets whereas wake of ashes you know does damage to all targets so Wake of Ashes just generally is going to hit everything, uh, and then it also can get reset as well. But that's not truly where the extra damage is coming from. The Path of Ruin damage and Wake of Ashes damage is still relatively the same, despite that. Um, where the damage is coming from is that I'm spending three Holy Power in Path of Ruin, whereas I'm generating three Holy Power with uh, my Wake of Ashes. So what I actually saw is having more Divine Storm casts into large packs obviously becomes more damage so uh the more divine storms is still key so i, I said even in, i think in the first one of these dragonflight videos that th it's like a divine storm simulator you still want to be casting as many divine storms as possible so having your wake of ashes generate three holy power is just generating it's it's doing similar damage to the wake of ash to the path of ruin but you're also getting another divine storm on top of it that could trigger your divine purpose yeah, uh, and have another one you know so it's like it's kind of like this multiplicative thing to where my divine storm damage is just much higher in this build now either way even when i had some talents that were different than this and that wasted talents in other places um, the divine storm damage is still like your king damage uh either way so you just kind of want to feed into that the more damage you can do with divine storm the better essentially so obviously you have you're always going to take all the divine storm uh increasing talents for sure so uh right now that's where it's at which is very similar so if you if you think about this for a moment this is very similar except for the final reckoning and that's just because we already have sanctified wrath right if we could take final reckoning uh in shadowlands right now we would take it with our sanctified wrath right uh, that would be a no-brainer so uh, if you think about the way we are right now, we have our Sanctified Wrath. It's a little bit different, of course. And we have our Final Reckoning, uh, which we would take, you know, <laughs> if we could. We have our Divine Toll and Divine Resonance, which still works similar for AoE situations. It's just not as good for single target. We have our Set Bonus here. The Set Bonus is nerfed on the Wake of Ashes, but we have our Set Bonus here. We have our Blade of Wrath and Zeal uh, helping, you know, accentuate the set bonus there and it's it ends up becoming now we have empyrean power as well because we don't have to choose between zeal and empyrean power uh we have tempest of the Lightbringer, so we have that legendary on essentially uh you know calm before the storm as well so we have like we have like basically <laughs> the same and since i'm running uh might instead of crusade i'm basically just running the shadowland season four build and this was just by far my best damage so uh i would say if you like the way shadowland season four plays uh you get to you, obviously you get some extra stuff you get your final reckoning you get your um spell wording over here you get to mad paragon and dusk of dawn eventually right so you have extra stuff don't get me wrong it's not like it's exactly the same it's it's the same plus extra i guess you would say and then like some you know ashes to dust is a little bit nerfed uh, but it's like the same plus a little bit extra. You, get, you also have a divine, divine protection in here. And so it, it actually feels pretty nice. Uh, another critique I do have, though. So I, I like Shadowlands Season 4 for Rhett. I think it feels pretty good in Mythic Plus Dungeons. I do a lot of damage, as I've talked about. Um, you know, 
beyond good warlocks and good hunters, I feel like I can compete with anybody else. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I kind of like it the way it plays like this. Obviously, what we want to see is, because these points are easy to take out, right? You take two points out of High Lord's Judgment, you buff Exorcism, you buff True Swake, and then all of a sudden it feels a lot better, right, as an AoE. Now, there is other issues here. Now, currently at the bottom, there's almost nothing good for AoE or for dungeons, right? So on the right side here, we have Templar's Vindication, Final Verdict. These are completely single target things that you wouldn't take in like a Mythic Plus environment, really. Vanguard's Momentum is fine, but I, I almost think the Vanguard's Momentum needs to go up to this row. And it should go like Vanguard's Momentum, uh, the Templar's Vindication, Final Verdict. I still don't think that's a good line. I think that's too many points, right? I think some of these need to be single point nodes instead because we just have access to nothing pretty much down here and it feels really bad now the the this set that i have down here feels really good together all this stuff feels good uh but there's just nothing else to bother even taking down here because i'm not going to put two points in the templar's vindication relentless inquisitor guys it just does not feel very good it's actually a good legendary in shadowlands uh but having points in it just feels like a waste like maybe i move my high lords you know moving high lords judgment down here I don't know if I can do that yet. I don't think I have enough talent points to quite do that. I think this might erase my bottom part if I do this. No, I do actually. So maybe moving High Lord's Judgment down there would actually be an overall DPS increase. That's that's possible. But it just doesn't feel great uh, down here. And it, with Ashes to Ashes being so powerful, the other things on this row are just not really comparable to that. Now, Ashes to Ashes needs to stay there. I, I've gone over that. I was happy when they moved it to exactly where I asked them to move it to because it is so necessary. Like, this is a, this is, without this, it makes Rhett kind of stink, kind of makes us want to take Seraphin over here, kind of ruins everything else. Um, I think now that we have, and, and the way that you can get Seraphin from your Rat Aura as well, I think the old way of playing Seraphin is just kind of out the window. I don't know that anybody really wants to play that way now. I think getting these proc Seraphins is actually pretty good, especially when you have a weak aura to track them and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to spend Holy Power on them anymore. I think we want to spend Holy Power. If we're doing this Builder Spender thing, we want our spending to be doing damage directly and not like spending to buff ourselves then do damage. I think that's slow and clunky compared to this way. So Ashes Ashes needs to stay here. I just think that maybe there, there should be some other rework here in some way. Um, I, I don't know exactly how you would do it. I You know, because they're trying to make this like look the same on each side and everything like that. Um, maybe, I don't know, you would just have to change the way it looked, right? So maybe like Virtuous Command, so you take Virtuous Command over here, and then you can go into Final Verdict or Vanguard's Momentum, and then off to the side, if you did take Final Verdict, you can grab Templar's Vindication, it's over here on the right side, and then you would do the same thing over here maybe with Relentless Inquisitor where it's off to the side. So you take Divine Toll, you can grab execution sentence and then underneath that you can grab this choice node and then off to the side to the left if you want you could grab relentless inquisitor to the left and the point above it would technically be execution sentence um maybe something like that would work just so we have access to these things down here uh you could argue that then we would have too many capstones but like this right side isn't like final verdict is actually a pretty good capstone for single target right uh so you could argue that we have too much stuff then I would understand that argument, but something needs done with this. Maybe just having better stuff down here in general that we're going to take either way. Like, uh, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know for sure what, what you would do there. Uh, I'd have to think a lot more about the design of the talent tree to have something firm there. But this doesn't feel good because I'm, I'm literally just taking, you know, and maybe the Relentless Inquisitor is the right route to go here, but I'm only taking otherwise four, five, six, seven points at the bottom. And I think. You could have like 11 or something at the bottom, either 10 or 11. So I don't even want these points. I'm just like choosing points in the middle <laughs> of which ones that I want to go with. So I would say that feels bad too. So some sort of rework for the bottom, especially for multi-target. Um, this node here, Touch of Light Incandescence, needs tuned. Exorcism, tuned up. I would like to see a rework on Exorcism on the entire way that it works. I would like to see it be a longer cooldown maybe even. Um, and just it, you use it. You use it when you're doing a big pull. You're doing a big pull. You use it on boss fights. Maybe something like that. That's how I would like to see it. 
Um, either that or it has to generate holy power. And then True Swake needs tuned as well, because neither of these two are really worth taking currently. So um, that's where I'm at on it, guys. Uh, this is kind of where I'm at on the build. Uh, I kind of have two points to play with, essentially. Relentless Inquisitor. And I, I ha I'll have another talent point, too. I'm only level 67. So it's not like this is the only talent points that I'll have. I actually will have either one or two more. So, um, But right now, I have two talent points to play with, and I can move that to High Lord's Judgment. I could move that to uh, Blade of Wrath build, stuff like that. And, you know, you could just grab your 2% mastery up here if you wanted. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm at. This seems like it's going to be the best build. So uh, I'm going to play with this build from now on in Dungeons for the most part. Uh, I am going to, at some point, test Executioner's Wrath. Funny story. I uh, can't really test that right now because things die too fast. <laughs> I found that out. So I will have to probably wait to like Mythic Plus or at least Heroic. Uh, maybe Heroics you could get it off on Trash Packs, but I'm still not sold on that either. Um, but might have to wait for Mythic Plus to really test out Executioner's Wrath. Other than that, it's just going to be a raid talent. And not a dungeon talent uh but yeah um looking forward to that i want to see some tuning i want to see some fixes on the things that i pointed out but yeah I i'm happy with the damage i'm happy the way it feels it just feels like shadowlands season four so if you like season four shadowlands rat in dungeons then you'll really like this because you have the same stuff plus more uh, if you don't like it and you are like give me the consecration give me you know i want the exorcism i want the true swake then you're probably not gonna uh, like it that much but i don't think anyone's like that married the true swake i think some people really like the exorcism but i don't think anyone really cares about true swake but the point is if it's going to be a talent an aoe talent um uh, you know essentially an aoe talent because it's an aoe ability that burns uh you need to have this do more damage than you just do so uh yeah that's it for this one guys uh the next time i do a at least a dungeon video i will be max level because i want to i want it to be able to test executioner's wrath and stuff right it tests crusade and stuff like that so the next time i do a dungeon video i will be at max level so it might be a while um if i do some single target stuff i'll have that up on there for you though uh as far as like single how single target feels but as far as dungeons go i am going to wait until i can test out some different kind of stuff in a more sustained environment so as always i do ask you to please subscribe to the channel it helps me out so much and other than that everybody have a good one